We're in the beginning of what appears to be a great technological upset. But some say this has happened before. The classic historical example of a technological disruption that most people would point to is, is what happened in agriculture. It used to be that half or more of the people in the United States worked on farms. Now it's maybe one or two percent of our workforce is directly engaged in agriculture. So there was a huge disruption there. The disruption was tools like the tractor and the combine. Modern equipment speeds up the work, makes it easier and more efficient too. And it hasn't stopped. We've always made machines that made us people better. Right? Today, a farmer can plow the fields for 150 hungry people. And barely has to lift a finger to do so. Machines increasingly equipped with sophisticated machine vision and artificial intelligence now plant, weed and harvest an ever-growing array of crops. And it isn't just the field work that's being disrupted. Today, robots are prepping, cooking and even serving us tasks that until recently only a human could perform. So when we hear the sound of the bell, we know that a new order needs to be prepared. Fire one to bring. At Zoom Pizza, it's all about the fresh ingredients and the robots. And now Marcy's going to spread that sauce. And we want her to spread the sauce evenly, but not too evenly, because we still want to have that artisan feel. Marta isn't your typical line cook. It's an industrial robotic arm modified to spread pizza sauce just so. At Zoom, humans and robots work together to make pizza. The robots do the tasks that are repetitive, that are boring, that are unsafe like sticking your hand in and out of an 800-degree oven. Colin says thanks in part to the robots, only 9% of Zoom's operating cost goes to labour. A typical pizza restaurant might spend 25% on workers. But Zoom insists it's not out to replace people with robots. Humans do the tasks that are human-centred, like cooking from scratch, preparing fresh produce, making sauce. And so this is how we're able to unlock human potential to give people better, more satisfying jobs, and how we're also able to reduce some of our hourly labor costs so we can spend more money on high-quality ingredients for our customers. But to some employers, robots could be the perfect burger flippers as fast food workers demand higher pay. Last year, then-CEO of Carl's Jr., Andy Puzder, who was briefly President Trump's Labor Secretary pick, told Business Insider that automation might be a way to counter a rising minimum wage. There is no need or requirement for automation to replace jobs or reduce wages or in any way hurt human beings. The problem exists when the industry attempts to use automation as an excuse or justification to drive down wages for workers, somehow to pit robots and humans against each other. Um, or to suggest that policy to raise the minimum wage is wrong-headed because it necessarily results in automation, which we have just not seen to be the case. But closer to the ground, many farmers see automation as an absolute necessity as agricultural labor shortages loom. We've got an aging workforce, so people who are coming out to do agricultural work, we're not getting that younger population into the job. Planning ahead for the future, it's important that we're ready to have fewer workers. Crops like corn and wheat have been automated for decades. New robotics are now being developed to do the often backbreaking work of fruit and vegetable farming. Take this automated lettuce harvester at Taylor Farms. The idea around this equipment was really take the hardest part of the job out, which is the bending over and picking the lettuce. And so the automated harvester allows us to use water knives to pull the product off the bed tops and bring it up to a, a table where then it's inspected by human beings today. The harvester reduces lettuce picking labor needs by half. I think we're always moving down that automation track. I don't know if you get to full automation. There's a science around agriculture, but there's a bit of an art to it as well. But I think in terms of getting rid of the hardest part of the jobs, I see that continuing to flow. 
Another California robotics company is taking on even more difficult and delicate harvesting, picking fruit. So the advantage that people have over a robot is just the ability to do this task at all. It's never been possible before for a robot to recognize fruit and pick it without damaging the fruit or without damaging the tree. But this prototype robot harvester uses cutting edge machine vision and artificial intelligence to precisely pluck apples from the tree. Our machine goes down an apple orchard row, takes lots of pictures of the apple canopy. And the artificial intelligence is used to recognize those apples and find out where they are in the space. And then we use automation on the manipulation side to go and pick those apples off of the tree. This machine was developed for the US apple industry, which has also struggled with labor shortages. It could be deployed in orchards as soon as the fall of 2018. We're just beginning to inch closer and closer to what people can do in both vision and robotic manipulation. As they advance, expect to see more robots making meals possible. We're cooking from the heart. We're cooking from that place in us that's very human. So it's never our desire to look at automation as a way to completely change that entire process. We use automation in the places where robots are better than humans. But there are many places where humans are better than robots. Robots can't go to my local produce farmer and talk to him about what's coming into season. At least not yet. Still, Zoom is already making room for a new bot, one that will pull the hot pies from the oven.